Welcome to the exam room. I'm Dr. Neil Barnard. Today we're going to talk about the safety of pharmaceuticals. It was February 2016 in Seattle. The Food and Drug Administration stepped in, stopped a research study on a cancer drug because although it looked safe in mice, it looked safe in dogs, it killed human patients. It caused intracranial hemorrhages, it caused cardiac deaths. And uh, to address this, and to see if there's a better way, are Christy Sullivan and Elizabeth Baker from the Physicians Committee. Christy, let me start with you. Um, the drug toxicity kind of mm -hmm. problem, mm -hmm. common, rare, what do you make of it? It's actually surprisingly common. In fact, adverse drug reactions are the fourth leading cause of death in the United States today. You wouldn't think that would be the case, but in fact, it is. We are constantly seeing drugs being shown to be unsafe in clinical trials or once they've been put on the market and patients are taking them. Okay, and why? Uh, these drugs are getting on the market, they're appearing safe, and they are, they are not. That's correct. These drugs have all gone through preclinical testing. Preclinical testing meaning? Preclinical tests are the tests that are conducted before a compound is tested in humans. Okay. And traditionally, these tests are conducted in animals. Which species are we talking about? We're talking about a variety of species. We see mice, rats, dogs, cats, pigs, guinea pigs, monkeys. The whole range? Absolutely. Okay. And you're saying that although they do these tests, and these are the tests that are traditionally used, they're, they're not they're not giving us the information that we need to protect our patients. Uh, give me a way out. Um, I, I'm hearing a need for human testing, but obviously you can't test on human right. beings. We, we need to be sure that um, drugs are safe before they're given to humans, even in clinical trials. Okay, how do you do that? Well, actually there are advances in science right now that we can take advantage of. People are developing different types of models based on human cells and human tissues. Uh -huh. One example is a uh, mini brain, what they call it. It's a tiny little brain in a glass dish uh, made of human cells and grown into the shape that you would normally see in a regular human brain in a person. And you can uh, put drugs in these little brains and see how the brains react, see what, what kinds of um, problems are caused by those drugs. Can I get many other organs as well? Yeah, absolutely. Actually, centers around the country and universities around the country are thinking about how to develop other organs. Some are on chips, in fact. Uh -huh. uh, they can take little silicone chips, maybe as big as your fingernail. And there are little channels in there that they put lung cells, kidney cells, um, bone marrow cells to look at specific types of toxicity that drugs might cause or that might, we might be worried about. And even the federal government is getting involved in this. The National Institutes of Health has established an institute, NCATS, the National Center for Advancing Translational Sciences, to look at these types of technologies and to develop, to develop them and push them out to industry. And now, mm -hmm. why does the federal government want, want this? Well, the federal government wants to protect patients. They, okay. they understand that what we've been doing is not working and we need to do better. And we can do that by testing compounds, by testing pharmaceuticals in, in these tests that, such as what Christy described, that are physiologically relevant to humans. Now, I know you've been, both been working with a lot of stakeholders. You work with the government. Mm -hmm. You work with the drug manufacturers. Um, and you work with patient groups as well who want safety. Um, am I right in hearing that there's excitement and this is, this is gathering steam? Absolutely, there is great excitement in this area. And actually, er recently, we pulled together a group of these stakeholders. So the Food and Drug Administration, the pharmaceutical industry, patient groups, research groups, who all understand that we need to improve upon what we're doing. We need to do better for patients. And it was, we had a great meeting, very interactive, and at the, at the end we all agreed that we need to collaborate. Collaboration is the best path forward to protect our patients and ensure that predictive test methods are used. I love it. Give me a prediction. Do you think animal tests are going to continue to fall? Or, or? Oh, absolutely. Um, one of the things that we talked about at the roundtable that 
most people got behind was the need for training. Mm -hmm. That these methods are coming online and the FDA needs to understand how to use them, how to use the information that comes from them. We also need young scientists to come from academia and develop more of these tests. Well, that's fantastic. You know, what I'm hearing is that the, the real prime motivator here is patient safety. Mm -hmm. um, we want something to, to guarantee safety, but at the same time, what you're describing sounds very, very fast. It sounds a whole lot cheaper than doing animal tests, and I'm getting the feeling that the animals are going to thank us too. So thanks a lot to my panel, and thanks to all of you. Mm -hmm.